Well, uh, thank you for inviting me here this afternoon. And uh, I understand this panel is the last panel between you and the wine. So, <laughs> um, so that's always an unenviable um, position to be in as a speaker. But um, we'll, try, we'll, we'll try and make it, it worthwhile. Um, you know, the first thing I want to say, it's just nice to see you. And um, I wish we had enough time. I really wish we had enough time for me to go around the room and hear from every single one of you who you are and where you come from. Because the wonderful thing about Harvard is, as you're getting to know each other, is that everybody who comes here has an interesting story. And it's really the remarkable thing about Harvard that as you go on and the more years you spend at Harvard, the more remarkable stories you hear. And um, I've had the privilege of being at Harvard as, a, as an undergraduate, as a graduate student, and as a parent, um, because my eldest son is now a Harvard student, um, who has a, a roommate who translated the Harry Potter books into Mongolian. <laughs> um, and you know the stories just you know they they just like every year they just get better. So um, I'm not so this probably group is too big for me to hear about you, but you before your wine get to hear about me. Um, so I uh, am originally from San Mateo, California, where I went to Aragon High School, which is a very ordinary public high school in Northern California. And uh, I came east um, to, uh, to go to Harvard as an undergraduate and then eventually stayed on for a master's and MBA. And I um, talked to you just to you know, make three points. Um, first of all, I have been very lucky in my career to have been able to be in senior positions in three sectors, in the private sector, the uh, government sector, and you know, now the nonprofit sector. And in talking to a lot of my students, this is something that they are very, very interested in. How do you kind of go move between sectors? Uh, and uh, so I talked to you a little bit about that. Um, I had the opportunity first, I worked at um, Boston Consulting Group where I was uh, there for 10 years and I was based in London, Madrid and Moscow and I was a partner there for some years um, at a time when Boston Consulting Group, which is a management consulting firm, was very rapidly growing and I was lucky enough to be able to move from there. That was a great job, uh, but when I was ready to move on I was able to come into the government uh, where I was the Assistant Secretary and Chief Financial Officer of the U.S. Department of Commerce during the Clinton administration for a number of years. Those were, incidentally, the years when we balanced the budget. Um, <laughs> and um, it was um, really, uh, you know, after and, and after a really interesting time as the number three in the Commerce Department for some years. I then came uh, 10 years ago to Harvard. I've been at the Kennedy School ever since. And uh, I teach budgeting and public finance. So the first point that I want to make is that people ask, how did you manage to move from the private sector to the uh, government sector to the nonprofit sector? And this um, is. I can't say this to everybody who asked me, but this is really where Harvard comes in. Um, because the reason I was able to do that really was because when I was at Boston Consulting Group in London, I had good friends from my Harvard days who were uh, going into the Clinton administration. And when I said, you know, I'd like to come back, I'd like to join, they uh, made it possible for me to do that. And similarly, when we lost the election, um, uh, when Al Gore lost the election and, uh, in uh, uh, 2001, um, there were many people who were, you know, I don't want to say they were stuck in Washington because Washington's a great place, but they didn't have the options that I had. You know, and I immediately had my Harvard sort of network saying, well, why don't you come back to Harvard, come teach at the Kennedy School? And so Harvard really made it possible uh, to do that. And what I see with my students now is that they move around in all different sectors through this network that they develop while they're at Harvard. Um, the second point uh, I will make is about my research. 
Uh, my research is in the budgeting and financial management and money area. Um, I have done a um, fair amount of work. Um, I'm most uh, well known for the work that I've been doing, which includes two books and, and many book chapters and papers on the costs of war, particularly the cost of the Iraq and Afghanistan war. In 2004, I began to think about the question, just trying to figure out how much was the war costing. And by 2005, a lot of people were saying that the war was costing a lot, but it's kind of hard to grasp what a lot, you know, what a lot means. And so we actually looking at the numbers in the government, there was, there was no one who was really looking at the dimensions of war costs, including what we were spending, as well as the accrued long-term costs of providing medical care and disability benefits to veterans who had fought in the war, as well as replenishment and reset of the military, as well as the costs associated with paying interest on all the money we were borrowing to pay for the war, as well as some of the economic impacts of the war, such as the uh, effect on oil prices that was ricocheting through the economy, leading to uh, pressure on liquidity, which was leading to the housing uh, bubble and so forth. So um, that work, um, which I've done uh, with Joe Stiglitz, and I have a new book that came out um, uh, that is about to come out, and I have a new paper that came out last week, um, has been an enormously satisfying. I mean, if you can call anything working with war and veterans satisfying, but I mean, it, it has been a great opportunity to do something where I care deeply about the subject where I've been able to have the support and the resources of the Harvard community, where partly because of being at Harvard, I've been able to team up with Joe Stiglitz, who, as you know, is a Nobel um, Prize winning economist and, and write two books with him. And the um, second point really about Harvard is the fact that you have, for anything you do, for the research that you do, for the papers that you write, for the articles you write, you have a um, sort of megaphone because it comes from Harvard. Um, that gives you a responsibility to do it right, but you also have a megaphone. Um, for example, the paper that came out last week, our public affairs office just sent me an email saying that that paper has already been seen. Now, I don't know how they calculate this. They may be off, but they claim it's been seen now already by 70 million people. Um, and that it's crashed the Kennedy School server on, on the Reddit and, you know, all of this. Now, you know, they may be off by, as I say, you know, a, a huge um, factor for all I know, but you get the idea that even if they are, I mean, there is a large megaphone for all the work that you do. Um, third of all, I'm involved with a lot of local government um, issues. I work with Boston and Somerville and Cambridge and Brookline and all of the local communities. I've run a program with my students in the community for about eight years now, where we work on all kinds of projects. We've worked helping the cities with their budgets, helping the city set up the bike lanes, helping the city with recycling, helping the city figure out how to replace lighting with LED lights, helping the city with financing of uh, parks and greenways, all of these kind of things because most local governments, they A, they don't have that much money, and B, they're always dealing with a super urgent crisis. They're dealing with the fire. They're not dealing with sort of thinking about, you know, how strategically they might want to fight fires over the next few years. Um, I've had more than 300 students who have gone through this program of this field learning, many of whom have then gone to work in local government. They've been students from throughout the, the um, Harvard community from the Urban Design School, from uh, the, the School of Public Health, the School of Education, the Divinity School, the Business School, the Law School. And it's one of the um, exciting things for you right now that Harvard, I think, and a lot of education is in the middle, is sort of at the beginning of a revolution in thinking about how we teach with a lot more experiential learning, more experimental learning, more there's the, you know, iLab, the opportunities for entrepreneurship, for entrepreneurship, for, um, you know, for all of the things which are, are going into open source development and all of these things. You know, you're right sort of at the 
good part of the wave. You know, I'm from California, right? So we always have to think about the wave. But you know, you're on the right side to ride this wave. So I think the next few years are going to be very exciting. And certainly, my um, opportunity, my opportunity in doing this field learning work over the last few years has been just fantastic. So um, finally, I'm supposed to say um, to you, um, what are the opportunities and the challenges about working? <laughs> about coming uh, as a graduate student to Harvard. And um, the, they, are, they are the same thing. It's like my, my youngest son says to me, um, his two older brothers are now in college, and my youngest son is at home. And he says that the good thing about being still at home is that um, he has all the attention from his mom and dad. And the bad thing about being the youngest one at home is that he has all the attention from mom and dad. So um, the great thing for you at coming to Harvard is the incredible amount of activities going on every single day at Harvard. I mean, the scale is unbelievable. Every single day in every possible discipline, you know, museums and art shows and lectures and speakers and labs, and it's just, it, it's beyond belief, really. I've been here for years and it still defies belief. And it is remarkable how, um, how much there is going on all of the time. And so the, the challenge is also um, figuring out how to get your work done and kind of stick your nose to the grindstone amidst this splendor. You know, how to basically be able to say that that's absolutely fantastic, but there's only so much you can do, which can be frustrating and um, sometimes exasperating because you really want to do all, all these things and uh, you can only do so much. So um, congratulations on all of you for your admissions and uh, hopefully I will see some of you in my classes next year. And welcome to Harvard.